up guys? Austin here with the prep series. Um, I just want to do a vlog instead of um, maybe you don't like to read. Uh, so I can do a show of hands. Uh, where a lot of times I'd much rather just listen to someone. It's the whole reason why I listen to audiobooks, podcasts, uh, over reading a book uh, typically. So I just want to do this vlog series for you guys um, on the prep series that is on the blog on my website, which is physiquedevelopment.com. Uh, which I'm sure you guys know that if you're here. So, um, to get us started, uh, I'm four weeks out from the Kentucky Muscle Pro. Uh, it was October 29th. Um, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm ready, uh, which is weird to say four weeks out for me. Uh, just typically, I, I definitely believe in being ready early, uh, but I, I never am. Uh, so, I'm, I'm in a place where I think I'm leaner than I was maybe two weeks out at the beginning of peak week, um, competing last year in, in Dallas, which Dallas, uh, the Dallas Europa in Dallas, Texas was my IFBB pro debut, um, in men's physique. So, um, just to get us started here, uh, what does my training look like? Um, my training is a variation of the HS6 program. Uh, the HS6 is a strength hypertrophy six day split that uh, me and my colleague Alex Bush um, have previously published on our website uh, for purchase. And uh, it's an excellent program uh, covering different variations of strength and hypertrophy. Uh, it, it covers the rep ranges of strength um, to keep those adaptations that you've gained maybe through your strength phase. Uh, throughout your off season or um, what have you, and it also utilizes um, a lot of hypertrophy mechanisms and modalities there. So, uh, kind of what separates that program um, and why I'm able to use it during my prep is because of the focus um, in keeping adaptations of strength uh, in hypertrophy. And one thing that I've added to the HS6 program has been some metabolic work. So drop sets, mechanical drop sets, um, extended sets, you know, what have you. So I've uh, added that um, as a variance to the HS6 program. So um, for those of you that I think I run the HS6 program solely, uh, full disclosure, I don't. Uh, I do add a little bit as I go and um, as I feel I should. So um, that kind of moves me on to the point of something that you wouldn't have gotten in the blog if you read it. Uh, so advantage to you guys who are listening to the vlog series. Um, and that plays into just some auto-regulization. Um, auto-regulation. Um, auto that was tough for me, apparently. Auto-regulation of my workouts. So, uh, for example, two nights ago, I had a rough day, um, diet brain, you know, low energy, what have you. I had been low carb for seven or eight, nine days uh, and I it, it affected me for sure. Uh, I was low on energy all day and I got home um, from a long day of classes and I the last thing I wanted to do was go work out and so um, I waited. Uh, I waited until um, I waited past the time I typically would have went or um, should have gone maybe. Um, and therefore I got a better workout though. Uh, that's what I'm trying to get at here. Um, so I, I auto-regulated that and I took it as a light metabolic day. I kind of skewed from the HS6 program and what I did was is I added um, you know, tri-sets, uh, more supersets or quad sets or giant sets or whatever we're gonna call them. I added more of those in. I just hit a shoulders and arms day, something very easy but still got some blood flowing. Um, and got something productive done. Um, so I, I think that um, is definitely something to take away from this is that you're gonna have off days uh, from training and especially while, while you're dieting, you're gonna have those off days and that's okay. Um, just try to minimize those and approach them in a, in a smart way. And research um, recently has shown us that you, know, you can have maybe more volume over the course of the week if you're able to auto-regulate those days um, to your advantage. So uh, that's one thing um, 
that I did and do, um, and that's kind of how my training looks at the moment. Um, what does your nutrition look like? Um, my nutrition is as follows. Um, I have my phone here so I can get off task. My nutrition, my low days, and this is Sunday through Tuesday normally, um, is 240 protein, um, 140 to 150 grams of carbs, and typically 55 to 60 grams of fat. And these macronutrients, again, I want to stress are mine. Um, not saying they couldn't be yours, but you're not going to make the most progress um, off macronutrients that aren't yours or customized to you. Uh, that is a huge proponent of this whole process and you need to make sure you're basing your macronutrients off either previous history or what you took in the off season or your maintenance. Um, so that's very individualized and a lot of people think I have this crazy metabolism in which I don't um, and I do have to push food relatively low. Uh, during my preps uh, to get to the status um, that I need to to hit the stage, especially the pro stage. So um, Sunday through Tuesday are those low days. Saturday is the high day at 240 grams of protein again, um, 350 to 400 grams of carbs, and 45 grams of fat. Um, today is actually Saturday, so today is my high day. Um, and so I'm, I'm obviously excited for a high carb day. Um, but I've been having some issues with carb sources lately and have dealt with that is just I've tried different. Um, potatoes have given me uh, just some GI distress uh, and a bloat um, after I eat or consume them. So I've cut those out. Um, breads have given me some trouble. Um, so I've cut those out. And one other thing. Um, that's not coming to mind right now, um, that I've completely cut out uh, from my from my diet uh, four weeks four weeks out here. So again, that's very individualized. It's not something that I'm just recommending to you that you just cut those out because I did. Um, I've done this because I have issues with them. Um, I do believe food sensitivities to exist and I apparently have some to those foods. So my carb sources as of now are oats and white rice. Um, if I have over 50 grams of a carb, I have to go with white rice because even oats at some points and quantities do give me um, that bloated GI distress feeling and just I can't seem to digest it as efficiently. So white rice is my main carb source um, as of now, four weeks out. Um, and last thing that we're going to go over is just cardio. So, um, I am doing three sessions of low intensity steady state cardio and I'm doing two sessions of high intensity interval training. Um, both are done mainly on the cycling bike. Um, I'll try to post a video of that um, very soon so you guys can see, especially for the hit list is pretty self-explanatory on how to do lists, just do a low intensity of something. Um, I What I do is the incline treadmill, um, just walking at a low to moderate pace, or the cycling bike where I just do a low to moderate pace. Typically, it's around 25 to 30 minutes, um, completing about 10 miles um, three times a week on that. Now, one thing that I really want to touch on here is when I time those and why. So. The when is be, um, is after, I apologize, is after um, a few low carb days for me as when I will do my lists. So um, typically after, after my high carb days, I'll do my hit. So on my high, high carb day, um, I'll do a hit session and the day after my hard, hit, high carb day, I'll do a hit session as well. Um, and that's just because HIT, and especially the form that I do HIT, is a very glycotic process. It's using um, the glycolytic energy system, and you're using carbs for that um, and to fuel that. 
and it's so high intense that it cannot reach the Krebs cycle and become oxidative, therefore you can't use fats. So what are we gonna use? Probably protein, right? And protein is muscle, and we don't wanna use that muscle, um, that hard earned muscle at that, especially when we're trying to keep it around in a deficit later in prep. So when I do my hit is on my high carb day and the day after my high carb day. Um, so, and that is why, uh, just because I have more carbohydrates in my system, my glycogen stores are full, um, and I can really put in the most into that hit session and also not take away from my heart and muscle uh, that I'm trying to keep around. Uh, and then the list, obviously, I usually have a gap day uh, in between my, high, my last high intensity interval session and my lifts. So going back to my diet, uh, if Sunday, if Saturday is my high carb day, I will do hit on Saturday and Sunday. Um, and then usually Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, I do my low intensity steady state at the 25 to 30 minutes. Um, so that's how I usually time that out. So yeah, that is, a recap of four weeks out. Um, I'm going to link the HS6 program in the description box below uh, so you guys can go take a look at that if you haven't already. And this evening actually, Alex and I are going to be filming a upper body session of HS6 for you guys uh, and be putting that on the tubes so you guys can go um, either watch it if you've purchased the program and or get a view of one of the upper sessions um, because we we filmed a lower session already for you guys. So um, that's going to wrap things up here. Um, this is the vlog series. Uh, again, it's I've already done a written form uh, via blog on my website, uh, and that's www.physiquedevelopment.com. If you guys prefer not to listen to me rant or stutter or stumble upon my words, then go check that out. Um, so without further ado, I will see you guys later uh, in the next video, the three weeks out edition. See you then.